99 problems, but a mortgage ain't one. All right, guys, more questions answered. And uh, this is from Sappy Snuggles. I'm about to get an RV and make the big move out of my waste of money apartment. What would be your biggest suggestion for something to avoid when first making the transition? Thanks, love your channel. Well, Sappy Snuggles, I guess start start packing start pulling all your stuff out and throwing it away and donating stuff you don't need and and don't be sentimental about stuff the the more stuff you have the more clutter your life is and then you think you need a big rig to store all this stuff you don't need this you don't need you don't need most of this stuff i have the six month rule i'm actually trying to get down down to like a two or three month rule if i don't use something for a few months get rid of it i don't need it i go into my storage and this thing and i still pull stuff out that i haven't used since last year like why do i have this and i just pack it up and donate it or throw it away if it's junk so uh, don't be afraid to give away stuff. You will not miss it. After it's gone, it'll feel like a weight lifted off your shoulder and you'll be like, geez, why, why, why did I, why was I pack riding all this stuff? You don't need it. So don't think you need to store all this stuff is what I'm saying. Just get rid of it. Your life will be so much, so much better. Skull Leader 78 says, the question is, have you accepted any offers for your RV? What are the offers if that's too much info? Uh, don't answer. What is the next project if you took that offer? Uh, I did actually go over this, but I'll go over it again. Um, I did get an offer for this. I have a down payment on it right now. I have a $5,000 down payment on the rig. And uh, the deal is that they're going to come up with the rest of the money by the end of September. That's this month. If they do not come up with the rest of the funds and come and pick up the vehicle, they're from, just so you know, they're from Alberta, um, then I get to keep half the deposit. It's in my pocket. And... Um, so to me, it's a win-win either way. And the total price is $42,000 Canadian that I settled on. So whatever that is in, in US um, dollars, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what country you're in, but 40, I, I said I wouldn't take less than 40. So the offer was 42, I accepted it and um, I've answered all their questions. And uh, it's a couple that wants to come here from Alberta, pick it up and drive it back uh, to Calgary. So if they don't, I'm ahead two and a half thousand dollars and if that happens I am going to keep the vehicle for the winter and I'm going to continue upgrading it and improving it just like I always do because I love doing that sort of thing and then maybe I'll sell it next spring but uh, I wouldn't bother in the winter uh, and then of course I mean the more stuff I put into it the higher the price would go I guess but you know what 42,000 is like it, it, it would be a very slight profit over all the money I put into this um, definitely wouldn't pay for all my time nor the people that have helped me their time either but um, I almost second guess myself now with that $42,000. Maybe I should be asking for more. I mean, take a look at this. This one here is going for $40,000 US, which is well over 50 grand Canadian. And it's stock. It doesn't have anything. It doesn't have the solar. It doesn't have the fireplace. It doesn't have the shower door. It doesn't have the lighting. It doesn't have all the improvements. And it's going for $40,000. Yes, it's a dealer. And let's say you got a hell of a deal and you got it for even $10,000 less than the asking price it's still gonna cost you more than mine will. So, hello, why am I asking only 40 for this? Anyways, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not, again, I don't care if I don't sell it. I love this thing. I'm sorry to uh, admit this, guys, especially you two in Alberta, but um, if the deal doesn't go through, I am not going to be very sad about it. There's a small part of me inside kind of hoping the deal doesn't go through. I like this thing too much. And if uh, and what would I do with my next project? Don't know. I'll have to see what's on the market at that time. Johnny Doe says, out of curiosity, do you think the rain collector tubing will freeze in winter? No, <laughs> uh, definitely not. It is inside, remember? And that's why I ran the pipes inside, first of all, for that. And also because I like to see the water pouring in um, when it's raining. It's kind of gratifying. And uh, we don't also go below freezing really in Vancouver. It's very rare that we're anywhere near freezing here. Usually in the dead of winter, we're four or five degrees. So above freezing. And anytime we do have a cold snap and it does go below freezing, it's usually just overnight and it's only like minus one or minus two degrees. So barely freezing. And when you're inside with heat on and everything, it doesn't really matter. So we don't have a freezing problem here. Now, if I move to a cold climate or something like that, it still shouldn't be an issue because it's warm inside and the, the entire system is on the inside. But uh, if I were to leave the vehicle for a long time uh, without being in it, without heat, then maybe it would freeze, but so would everything else, right? So Jack Gentner says, when are you going to do another hangout chat? The last two were entertaining. Nah, not, not very often, man. Uh, if it's just the right timing uh, or I've got company over and we want to go on camera and I happen to be in some sort of free Wi-Fi, I'm not going to waste my data on that stuff. Sitting around, 
look, no offense to people that do the hangouts all the time, but most of it has nothing to do with RV life. They're talking about everything else and they just happen to be RVers. And most of the time they're not even in their RVs from the chats. I don't know. It, to me, it's just like I can spend a couple hours on that and blow my entire month's data plan um, talking about nothing. So that's why I don't do it. Black Van Man says, how much water do you use in a week? Uh... Because uh, he's not sure what size tank to get for his self-build. Well, uh, like I said in the in the uh, water collection video, my tank is 83 liters, and I usually would empty the tank once a week, and now it refills itself. So uh, that's just you know very minimal usage. I'm very careful with how much water I use. I don't leave the tap running when I'm brushing my teeth or things like that. Right? Those sorts of things they'll just become second nature at you after you live in a motorhome for a while.